Welcome back to my writer's room, everyone. I am Matt Wallace, YouTube's resident angry writer, and thank you for taking a few minutes out of your day to come hang out with me here in my angry, lonely little writerly sanctum. I always appreciate that. I really do. Uh, this week's vlog is brought to you by our vintage trading card pack of the day, which is 1992's Hellraiser. You see Pinhead's little reflective face there on the cover. Angels to some, demons to others. Ah, oh, ah. Oh. Oh, he doesn't, he never really had an evil laugh. I just made that up for the, what, you know, let's just move on. It is March 27th, 2018, and as you can see, Hamshackle Pig has donned his uh, hip waders there, and he stares helplessly, as he stares helplessly, rather, at an overflowing toilet, that's what that's supposed to be, and just copious amounts of liquid waste pouring out of it. You can just see his helpless, hapless expression. Uh, as always, this will relate to, as with all my hamshackle pig drawings, it relates to real life, and we'll unfortunately get to that story in just a minute, but, <laughs> yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get to it. So we've hit, uh, that roadblock, that classic roadblock of being an author who vlogs, because you see, vlogs move much faster than the publishing industry, or most industries in which uh, a creative writer uh, finds themselves working. The wheels of these industries move, if you didn't know, extremely slow. Uh, between when deals are made and deals are announced, between when books are bought and when books are released, or when, you know, if in the entertainment industry you could be talking years between when a script is bought and when, uh, when film actually rolls, or uh, when a script is... Bought, falls in a turnaround, is resold, rewritten. It's just, it is an incredibly long process uh, when you are a creative writer working in any of these storytelling uh, mediums. Uh, it's just a fact of life. So if you are an author who is a vlogger, and uh, the whole reason you have the vlog is to keep your audience up to date on what's going on with all your writerly things, you want to keep uh, the current news concurrent with your vlog. And that's where I find myself. I referred to it on Twitter yesterday as entering my uh, author news gestation period, which is the period when you know you have news to report, but you know it's going to be a long time before that news is officially announced, and you can share it with the public. So that's where we are. I am actually, not only do I have news, here's the thing, not only do I have news worth telling, I am like chock full of news. I have like several big news items to share with you all, none of which I can talk about right now for individual reasons, but the end of it is none of it's been announced yet. So I am gestating more news than I have ever attempted to gestate before. And then on top of that, the only news I have to share with you that I am able to share, rather only the, the only current events going on with me that I have to share, uh, are literally shitty. And again, we will get to that in a second. But um, I was thinking about all this, and I was actually really annoyed by it when I started to shoot this vlog. I'm like, what am I going to do in lieu of, of sharing this news with you all? And uh, as I often do, I thought, well, what would Mr. Rogers tell me to do? Um, that's the thing. I can't even think, like, what would Mr. Rogers do? Because I can't, I can't put myself in the place of Mr. Rogers. I could never be that pure or good or selfless. So I can't even think of it in terms of like, what would Mr. Rogers do? I can only think of it in terms of like, if he were here to advise me, which he would, because he would literally stop to advise anyone he was able to who needed help. If he were here to advise me, what would he tell me? Like, what would he tell me about uh, this, uh, this eternal quandary of authors when they finally, after years, most times of chasing good news, when they finally have a bunch of good news but they can't share it with the world and they're bursting to and the frustration of that, how would Mr. Rogers advise me in that capacity? And, uh, you know, because it's Mr. Rogers, obviously, he'd come up with a little song for me. He'd come up with a song to, uh, to express all of those feelings for me and reflect them back at me and in that way guide me through it. Uh, so that's, that's where I arrived at. And then when I started thinking, what would the song be uh, that Mr. Rogers would sing to me? And I thought I, that's what I should share with you on the vlog today. I should share with you the song that I imagine Mr. Rogers would sing to me if he were advising me um, in my current predicament. And that's, uh, and that's what I'm going to do. So here for you now is my interpretation of Mr. Rogers singing to me, uh, good news. What do you do with the weight that you feel? 
When you've waited so long to share good news that you could just bust. When the whole publishing industry seems to move at a crawl. And you finally, finally have such good news to share that you can't even just. What do you do? Do you call up a third cousin or a Facebook friend from middle school just to have someone else to tell? Do you pre-write all of your social media announcement posts or do you stick your head out the window and just yell? It's great to be an author with good news to share even when the wheels turn so slow. After months or even years of red lights and rejection, finally the green light that means go. I can tell my news when the moment is right. I can tell my news to the world when it's time. I can tell, tell, tell. And what a good feeling to be an author with good news to share and know that that good news is really mine. Know that there's something that finally went right that can help a writer become what we query. For an author can be a future bestseller and a screenwriter can have a pilot order to series. <laughs> that's... <laughs> so that's, uh, that was what I imagined Mr. Rogers would, uh, if he were here, what he would tell me. And it made me feel better. It really did. Because when does Mr. Rogers, uh, the specter imagined or otherwise, not make you feel better? So I don't have news to share with you on the, uh, on the writing front, but I did share that song, which I wrote for you, inspired, of course, by, uh, Good Feelings uh, by Mr. Rogers, and I hope you enjoyed it. I really, uh, I really do. So we've never been in here before on the vlog, have we? And uh, why would we? This is, uh, this is my wife and I's uh, master bathroom. And uh, it is immaculate because my wife is uh, very obsessive about that kind of thing. You'd never know, in fact, from looking at it right now, that just 24 hours ago, ladies and gentlemen and non-binary folk, uh, this entire, virtually every surface, every conceivable surface in this shiny, shiny space just 24 hours ago was covered in liquid human uh, waste. That is a true story. Uh, absolutely so, true. So, yeah, um, when we bought this house uh, just a few months ago, the bones were great, but it hadn't been updated. Uh, literally since like the 70s, like early 70s. It was just everything was old and it smelled like a cat exorcism had taken place in every room and it was just not, it was just not good. The bathrooms were the worst. So we, so every bathroom in this house, um, we stripped everything. We took them down to the studs, literally. We gutted it, gutted it entirely. And over two months and spending virtually every penny we had left, uh, we rebuilt these bathrooms uh, from scratch. Um, we, re we remodeled a lot of the rest of the house. We put in uh, new floors. The living room had that weird 60s thing where it was like sunken down a foot from the rest of the thing. We leveled that out. We did work on the whole house, but the bathrooms were like kind of our like pride and joy because we really, we took everything down to the studs and replaced everything. We picked out all of the stuff in here, the subway tile behind me for the showers, like right down to the gray grout. We had hours of discussions about grout for the bathroom. I never thought I would arrive at a place in life where I would have an hour long discussion about bathroom grout. But not only did I have it, I cared about it because this is, this is ours and this is the first time that that was ever true. And I never thought personally I would have anything like this. So we took it very seriously. We picked out all these pieces, all the tile, the paint, everything. Again, two months, and it was an exhaustive and stressful process, but we got it done, and the bathrooms are like fucking museums, and I am insanely proud of our bathrooms, which is why you can imagine sitting in the living room uh, this weekend with my wife and starting to smell that smell where you are, you're about to question vocal. You reach a point where your relationship with your significant other where you can just flat out call them out on uh, passing gas. Like you can just say, you just farted, didn't you? That's where we were both going to. And then we realized, oh God, it's much worse than that. And I ran in here and again, everything just covered in liquid waste. Uh, we had a massive catastrophic septic backup and uh, it was just awful. And it was, <laughs> and I just can't even tell you, 
after, after a week of really good news, I guess it was the universe crushing us down back to earth. Although most of the good news is mine, so I don't know why, why, why my wife had to be collateral damage in this. But uh, yeah, so the whole weekend, man, was first of all fixing the plumbing issue, which we have great, we have great plumbers and they did a great job. The other thing was sanitizing um, every inch of our home that was touched by what we choose to believe was mostly our liquid waste. And that was not fun. Uh, we got like industrial strength bleach and my wife, despite the fact as soon as we opened it, I told her do not breathe this shit in. She breathed way too much of it in cleaning because she gets really obsessive about it. She got really sick from the bleach. It was just, it was awful. It was just top to bottom, everyday awful. You know, not, and I try to keep these things uh, in perspective. I really do. You know, neither of us has cancer. Um, you know, our gorgeous remodeled bathroom got a little dirty and we had to clean it up. That's, that's, that's the truth at the end of the day. In the moment, realizing it's a first world problem does not help you. In the moment, you are literally ankle deep in shit in a house that you invested everything in and it feels like the world is turning upside down. And I think you're allowed to be stressed and angry in that moment. Perspective is for later. And right now I have perspective. Everything's clean, everything's good. They didn't have to tear up our new house to fix the plumbing problem, which I'm really happy about, but it just, at the end of the day, kind of ruined our weekend. And that's, so that is, that's the only story I actually have to share with you right now on the vlog, is our weekend of cleaning up feces. Uh, so yeah, I'm sure you're really glad you subscribed to the channel right about now, right? That's going to do it for this week on the vlog, folks. Uh, I hope you were at least uh, entertained by everything that's been going on, whether it was my Mr. Rogers song or our uh, poopy exploits uh, over the weekend. You gotta take the good with the bad, man. You gotta take, uh, as I've been saying since Saturday, into every life, a little poo must fall. And I think we can all appreciate, we can all appreciate the, the measure and the weight of that, uh, certainly. So, thank you very much. Please like, share, subscribe, leave me a comment, let me know what you thought of this episode of the vlog what you're thinking of the channel in general. Let me know what the best lunch you had in the last week was. I'm always interested to hear. Um, I will be back on Thursday to announce March's Angry Writer uh, Mystery Prize Box giveaway. So come back on Thursday to find out how to win a box full of books and swag. Compliments of me and uh, the Angry Writer channel. Just my way of saying thank you for being subscribed, for watching what I do and supporting everything I do. I really appreciate it. Um, until next week, I am Matt Wallace. Uh, I will see you all then. Same Matt time, same Matt channel.